Yeah. yeah. All right, so we're gonna let's do this frame analysis problem, and we're given this. We'll start with a simple frame here. It's a this angled uh, member ABC right here, where B has a concentrated load, A has a pin support. This is a connection at C, or a joint, if you will. And then at D, you have a pin support here. Um, you know, I, I recommend labeling the members first. So here, I would call this like member one, member two. And I will call this end I and end J of member one, end I and end J of member two. Okay. Then we would say we would go and calculate these reactions. So that, that involves the schematic and calculating these. So drawing this out. So I have like an AY, uh, a DY, and a DX. And to calculate these, so reactions. Let's see, let's call this reaction. So reactions I would do right here. I would do, let's see, sum of the forces in the horizontal equals zero. And I would have 20 kilonewtons plus dx equals zero. And that would tell me that dx equals minus 20 kilonewtons. Then I would go to, uh, I, I got to find the, um, let's say, uh, the reaction at either ay or dy. And so the thing I would do is take moments about a point. So in this case, I'll take moments about D equal to zero like this. And the reason I chose D is so I can eliminate the influence of DX, okay? And, and just try to eliminate it or make this as simple as possible. Uh, here, in this case, moments about D, I would have, let's see, I would have this distributed load has four times four, has a 16 kilonewton resultant times is two that resultant here is two meters from d right here then i would have this 20 kilonewtons which is a distance this line of action is going like this which is a distance three meters from d and then i would have uh, a y minus a y which is a distance of 10 meters equal to zero and that would tell me that a y is equal to hopefully 9.2, 9.2 kilonewtons, yay. And then I could just do some of the forces, some of the forces in the vertical equal to zero. And I would just get here, um, the distributed load is minus 16 kilonewtons plus dy plus not ay equal to zero. And that tells me dy is equal to, um, uh, 16 minus 9.2, which is 6.8, 6.8 kilonewtons. And bam. Okay. So there again, you pass statics, right? Okay. So done with statics. And now we are going to go and, and really, uh, isolate each member. Okay. So here, if, if one way to do this is, uh, um, is just draw each member one at a time. So let's go to member uh, member one, if you will. So let's let's draw the diagram for member one. So here, two, member one. So we're gonna draw the shear and moment diagram for member one. I'm going to orient this. When I draw this, I have here, if you will, I have this member like this right here. Uh, one thing I want to make sure is. This, I know when I look at this right here, this AY we said is, what did we say that was? That was uh, 9.2 kilonewtons, right? 9.2 kilonewtons, let me, 9.2 kilonewtons, okay? I want it to go, I want this loading to be broken up so that I have it going here. It's, it's longitudinal or in line with the member and perpendicular with the member like this. So I'm going to break up this force vector into uh, here and here. Does that make sense right there? So essentially this part will be the shear acting just inside. And then here, this will be the, the normal force acting just inside. And so here, uh, what I would get is that. Uh, let's see, we got to do some similar, some triangle, some geometry here. So this is my angle theta. This will be 90 minus theta. And that would make this theta, this would be 90 minus theta. So this would be theta. 
Would that make sense? Does that make sense? Shoot, that's, that might be a little complicated, but if you could imagine here this line like this, and this line is parallel to that line right here. This is theta. This is 90 minus theta. So that would make, and then this line makes a 90 degree right here. So this is theta. And then this right here is 90 minus theta. And that makes this, because this is a right angle right there, uh, theta. Okay? So if I, if I could zoom in on this one more time, I would have 9.2 right here. And then I would have here, let's see how it goes like this, like that, and like this. So I'll just draw this a little bit bigger. And this is theta, and this is 90. And this will be the, if you will, the shear at A, and I'll call this the normal at A right here. And so this 9.2, so theta is, uh, let's see, uh, theta or cosine theta, according to this, would just be, well, theta is 45 degrees because this is 6 by 6, right? So it, it, anyways, I don't need that right here. So theta is 45. So that's easy. That's a no-brainer. All right. So that makes VA equal to, um, uh, whoa, 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 Cosine theta is equal to adjacent VA over 9.2, yeah? So that makes VA equal to 9.2 kilonewtons times a cosine of 45, which is uh, square root of 2 over 2 times 9.2 is uh, 6.5. All right, 6.5 kilonewtons. And then because I, and the NA is also 6.5 kilonewtons because it's a sine of 45, and that's the same thing. All right, so now I'm ready here. So when I draw member one right here, I have here and I and NJ. And here at on this side of and I, I have 9.2 kilonewtons. Oh, not 9.2, sorry. Uh, 6.5 kilonewtons going like this. And then um, 6.5 pointing upwards right here in relation to ij okay in relation to this ij six this would be 6.5 kilonewtons i have a 20 kilonewton load that's acting at this angle theta okay and let me put that in green right here and i want to break this up into the you know this and this right here so here this, I want to break up into this and this, and that makes this theta right here. So 20 cosine of, of 45 is, um, I don't know what it is, 14.14 it, 14. 14.14 kilonewtons, and this one is 14.14, okay? And so now what I've done is, check this out, at this point right here, at point at point B, if you will, right here, I have a concentrated 14.14 going like this, kilonewtons, and then 14.14 kilonewtons going like this, okay? And at NJ, right here, I have this cut. These are essentially cuts right here. I have this, I'll call this, uh, this is a cut, and I'm looking, at, I'm looking at the left side of the cut, so I've cut right here, I'm looking at the left side of the cut right before the joint C. I have this V J one, okay, and then I have N J one, and I have M J one. Oh, and all this notation is going to be confusing, right? But but here we could call this. Uh, we don't we don't need to call it anything. Let's call it. Let's just let's just leave it like that for now. Gosh, I wonder if it's going to be confusing. Anyway, it doesn't have to be this confusing. I'll probably do another example. <laughs> okay, so here, using three equations and three unknowns, right? Three equilibrium equations from three, three equilibrium equations. I can determine these, okay? Equilibrium equations, I can determine those. And so that would just be, um, gosh, that would be, so if I do some of the forces... Here, this is, I'm going to call this, if you will, my local X and local Y. So if I do some of the forces in my little X this way, I equal to zero, then I would have NJ1 plus 14.14 kilonewtons uh, 
plus 6.5 kilonewtons equals zero. And that would tell me that NJ1 is negative 20.64 kilonewtons right here. Then I would take moments about a point. And so let me take moments about end, um, NJ equal to zero. I'll say this is positive like this. And I would have MJ1 plus 14.14 kilonewtons times, shoot, what is this length going to be right here? This length right here is 3 times the square root of 2 meters. Yeah? Okay. Because, because this is 3 and this is 45 degrees right here. Okay. So this individual length is three times the square root of two, okay? And this right here is also, that's three, so it's just a 45 degree triangle there. Bam, three times square root of two, and then this length is also three times the square root of two, okay? Meters, right there. So this would be 14.14 times three times the square root of two meters uh, minus, 6.5 kilonewtons times 6 times the square root of 2 meters equals 0. And that tells me MJ1 is, I don't know, what is it? Is it 4.84? Um, and you take it to the other side. Negative 4.84 kilonewton meters and the negative just means that the arrow should be going the other way same thing here with the negative right here. and then i do some of the forces in the vertical or in the lowercase y equal to zero plus like this right here and that would say that vj1 negative minus 14.14 kilonewtons plus 6.5 kilonewtons equals zero and that would tell me VJ1 is equal to negative, negative 7.64 kilonewtons, okay? And so what I want to do next, and I, I know this is, this is exciting right here, is I want to redraw this member right here, like this, right here, and excuse me for not doing the straight edge, and here right here so this is 14.14 i'm going to redraw it with all the loading on it again okay kilonewtons kilonewtons right here and then i have the 6.5 and 6.5 like this right here and then i have right here i have at this location i have let's see if i draw these correctly i have 7.64 i have 20.64 and I have 4.84 kilonewton meters. This is kilonewton, this is kilonewton, yeah? Now I can draw my, my shear and moment, or my axial shear and moment diagrams, okay? And so if I look at this right here, so let me kind of continue on this page. If I look at this right here, if I just draw the lines now, okay? So I draw the lines, oh, okay. Bam, like this, and I want to draw these lines at the ends, at discontinuities, and really these are the only discontinuities. So my axial force diagram right here, my axial force diagram right here is that here's my end diagram, and this is in kilonewtons, and here, my member in this region, is it in tension or compression? It's in compression, right? If I were to make a cut right here, I would see it's going to be negative 6.5, right? It's going to be in compression. So... So that means that I have minus 6.5 right here. And even right here, if I cut right here and I look at it, I know that I'm going to have a negative 20.64, right? So this really, this direction right here indicates that I'm going to do a shift down of 14.4. So this is minus 6.5 kilonewtons. And then down here, this is, this point right here is minus 20.64 kilonewtons. So this is my axial force diagram in this member, okay? Then I can do my shear diagram right here. And because I'm going left to right, 
right here. I have, this will be shear and kilonewtons like this. I have here, I'm going to go up 6.5 kilonewtons. There's no loading in between, so I go over here. Then I have this concentrated load of 14.14, so it shifts me down to hopefully, what would that be? 14.14 minus 6.5. So this should be minus 7.64, and then I have no loading again, so therefore it's just constant all the way across. And this is my shear diagram, okay? Then I can draw my moment diagram. So now let me, let me fit, let continue these lines right here. Bam, like this, right here, right there. And I have here, like this. And here, I would have, in this case, I have uh, my moment, which is in kilonewton meters. This equals, it starts from here. It's a free end. There's no concentrated moment here. There's no moment here. So I know that should be zero. I should start at zero. I have a positive shear value, so I should have an increasing slope. This distance here was three times the square root of two meters. This is 6.5 kilonewtons. So this area here, this area here is 6.5 times 3.2 kilonewton meters. And what's that? 27.58 kilonewton meters. So that means I should increase linearly to 27.58 kilonewton meters. So this should be 27.58. Okay. Then I have here a negative area. So this region right here, this also three times the square root of two distance right here. This area is, uh, what is that? 32.41 kilonewton meters right here. And because I have a negative slope, I got a decrease. So 32.41 minus 27.58 is, what the hell is that? Um, 4.83, so I should end up at negative, right here, 4.83, and that's amazing because this is a negative 4.83 kilonewtons because, ta-da, I have this moment is negative 4.84 or 83, okay, so that should technically be 4.84, right, or depending on how we did our significant figures, hopefully we did it right. But this would be my moment diagram for this member. Yes, and these would be my, my normal shear and moment diagram for member one of this frame. All right. Let's come back and do member two.